Hey everybody. You hear that? No, listen closer. Can you hear it? No, really. Now the reason you can't hear any sound is because this bike has a carbon belt drive. So on most bicycles, the drivetrain is run by a chain. When you pedal, a chain transfers the power from the pedals to the back wheel, and that's what gives you forward motion. Same principles apply in a belt drive, but instead of a chain made out of metal, it's powered by a belt that's made usually out of carbon or carbon fiber. And I know what you're thinking. Chains have worked just fine on bikes for 150 years. So why go changing it now? Well, two answers. One is because the bike industry changes things for no reason all the time, and seldom do they make improvements. But the real answer is a little more complicated than that, so that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. I've already heard one of the advantages of a carbon belt drive, or rather you didn't hear it, and that's the quiet. When you ride bikes like this, there's no metal on metal noise from the chain, so the bikes are amazingly quiet. Really, the only sound you hear is the rubber on the asphalt. Which is not that big of a deal, especially in a city full of loud vehicles. But when you ride it, it's kind of nice, actually, to have that uh, quiet. It's just a little bit of extra peace and quiet. Another advantage of carbon belts is their longevity. They're said to last up to three times longer than a regular chain. Because they are made of the carbon fiber filaments, they're super strong. And in my experience, that's true. They have lasted a long time. Although I should say, I a caveat, I did break one one time, but it was like super freezing cold temperatures below the threshold of where that particular belt was designed to take. So it was really the cold. I ended up getting a different belt that was built for cold and I've had no problem. Now the third big advantage of belt drives, and this is the one that drew me to them in the first place, they're super low maintenance. With a chain, you've got to grease it and clean it all of the time. Not so much with the carbon belt drive. You don't get those uh, tattoos on your leg or uh, grease on your pants. You don't have to clean them, they just keep themselves cleaner. And so they require almost no maintenance, which I love. I originally went to a carbon belt drive for the winter and I was always rusting out my chains and I went to this and for winter it's been amazing. But even in the summertime, if you're into low maintenance, which that's my jam, carbon belt drive is a good option. So those are the three big advantages of them, but there are some trade-offs. One of the trade-offs is cost. Carbon belts are more expensive than chains, no doubt about it. Maybe three to four times as much. I can get a chain for what, 12 or 15 bucks, and a belt drive is maybe 30, 40, 50 bucks, something like that. They do last longer, so you have to factor that into it as well, but an upfront cost, they definitely cost more than a chain. The other big trade-off with belt drives is that they require a certain kind of bike, and this is probably the reason that belt drives have been around for years, but they still represent a pretty small fraction of the bike industry, is that you need a special kind of frame. Because the belt can't come apart like a chain can, you have to have what they call a split frame. So as you can see on this bike, designed to take this belt drive, this uh, triangle back here actually comes apart so that you can get the belt on there and you can put it back together. So that's why it's harder to get a belt drive bike. Because belt drives are still a bit of a specialty item, they're a bit trickier to get parts for, and not all bike shops will know how to uh, do maintenance on them, but just another factor to consider. One other thing you need to know about belt drives is that they don't work with traditional derailleurs. So as you can see on the back here, they don't have the typical cassette, the cogs, the belt is a little bit different. So what you need is an internal hub on the back. This one is uh, got Vinci technology. Technology. There's a number of different options for internal hubs, but you have to be aware of that as well. Look at the lone goose out on the ice. Okay, the ultimate question, should your next bike have a belt drive? Well, I remember when I first started researching belt drives, I was a little frustrated because I could never get a clear answer. Even the people I tracked down who had belt drives were a bit non-committal about them. The reaction was always like, eh, they're pretty good. No, nobody was like raving about them. And so I've been using them for a couple of years now. And I have to say, in my situation on my winter bike, I love them because they keep the rust off. Beyond the rust factor, I'd have to say, eh, 
Sorry, it depends on your situation. You're not going to get a definitive answer from me either. Uh, I do mostly urban cycling, so I like them because they're low maintenance. You can just pick up that bike and go. I know a couple of mountain bikers who use them. They feel more confident in the strength of the belt drive, and uh, they don't have to worry about lubing their chain all the time, so that's something as well. There are a limited number of frame options, so that's holding things back a little bit. Uh, but there are more and more coming online all the time. There are lots of great urban uh, bikes these days that help out belt drives. Sorry, but it's a non-committal answer, but there isn't one. Uh, there are certain advantages to belt drives and certain advantages to the old-fashioned chain drives too. So it's really up to you, up to your situation. Hope that helps your research a little bit if you're in the market for a new bike. Keep your options open. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.